Hi, and welcome to Book Bits. Book Bits is just a short sample, a juicy bit from one of my full reviews. In this case, it's from the full review I did of The Housekeeper's Diary by Wendy Berry. And I hope it just introduces me to new people that might not yet be familiar with what we're doing on this channel. I hope you enjoy it. Let's carry on and we're up to chapter 10, Staff Confidences. And I, I will be reacting to this one. <laughs> probably in a brutal way, at times. Now, this chapter opens up with Evelyn Dagley, who was the Diana's dresser at the time. And Evelyn tapped on the door as per normal with the early morning tray and she walked in, pulled back the curtains and said good morning and then proceeded to go into the bathroom to draw Diana's bath, which is pretty much standard routine for all the royals. Now, I'm going to quote you something Diana says and then I'm going to qualify it with something I think, which is just personal opinion. God, Evelyn, she shouted, what on earth have you been eating? You absolutely stink of curry. Get out and wash your hair, will you? I can't stand the smell, she bawled as she jumped out of bed and made for the bathroom. Yuck, it's revolting. Now, that, of course, according to Wendy Berry, was a horrible reaction, over top reaction. It actually drove Evelyn to tears. But <laughs> being a know-it-all and sharing a little bit, um, I think that it had something to do with Diana's bulimia at the time because even though she was reported to be recovered around this era, I think anyone that suffers from that eating disorder is always wary of anything that could trigger it to come back because it is truly a horrible thing. Although it starts off that you're making yourself sick in the early stages, your whole body's nervous system gets totally skewed and eventually it becomes reactive, even if you don't want it to be reactive. And it can be triggered by all sorts of things. It can be triggered by smells. It can be triggered by stress. It can be triggered by emotional, you know, triggers, it, a whole range of things, certain foods, certain activities, and you know, like I said, smells. So that to me, that over-the-top reaction smacks of someone who was fearful and distressed because maybe it genuinely did make her feel ill, the smell. And then she was probably terrified that the whole horrible cycle was going to start again. And when she was in the worst of that cycle, she was extremely vulnerable because the whole royal family was sort of thinking, oh, my God, what's wrong with this woman? You know, she's basically got a mental illness. She's really disturbed. Is she suitable to look after her own children? Oh, Paul Charles, you know, the whole thing. She got the repercussions of the illness. And at this point, I mentioned last chapter, Ken Wharf, which is in the book that I'm going to share with you at some point, had joined Diana as her protection officer. And the night before, they'd gone to see an opera and it was Verdi's Requiem, I believe. Anyway, they're all in the kitchen and they're discussing the opera from the night before. And Ken suddenly gets up, grabs a biscuit from the table and pretends it's a microphone and launches into this funny serenade in a rich baritone voice. Diana collapses into a fit of giggles and William and Harry looked up in amazement. And then he tapped and pirouetted around the floor and he serenaded Wendy and you know, a lot of fun was had. And Diana looked really well and happy and the mood swings appeared to have gone and she seemed in total control. So the arrival of Ken Wharf, someone that she could rely and trust, was a good thing for Diana. So Wendy Berry says that later that day she goes in to deliver some apple juice to the boys and to Diana and they're all on the couch and they're all cuddled up in their jammies and dressing gowns and slippers and they're watching a movie and evidently they're watching a really scary movie. And Diana says to Wendy Berry in a friendly way, oh, aren't I lucky to have my big, strong men to defend me, Wendy, you know, because the movie was so scary. And right in the middle of that lovely, cosy, wonderful time, uh, the then Prince Charles rings, <laughs> which is a bit of a downer when you're in the middle of a great movie and you're all really into it. Anyway, Diana dutifully puts the boys on the line and they talk to Charles for about 10 minutes. And then after they finished, she went on the line and she said quietly, yeah, I'm absolutely fine. Hope you're having a good time. And then Wendy Berry observed she looked wistful 
as her husband recounted a minor detail about the visit and she said, well, you're very lucky to be somewhere hot, she said sadly. Good night then. She put the receiver back and tried to get back into the film, but Wendy Berry said it was clear that her mind was elsewhere. So you've always got this push and pull, haven't you? You've always got this Charles at times being desperate and sad and bewildered and you've got Diana wistful and sad and wishing and yearning and you've got the close attachment they both have with their boys and you've got periods of wondrous times and then horrible times. That's what I mean. There isn't, there isn't a villain in this. I'm not Team Charles and I'm not t Team Diana. <laughs> I'm not. So if you enjoyed that little sample, I have left a link for you down below for the full playlist for The Housekeeper's Diary by Wendy Berry. And I've also left you the link to the actual video that little sample came from. Thanks a lot for joining me. Bye.